Okay everyone, welcome back to the channel for a video on Gran Turismo Sport. It has been a while since we've got some videos out on the channel, but I decided I wanted to get this guide done for you to try and help you out to improve your qualifying at Laguna Seca in the Renault RSO1 as it is a tricky combination and one that I've never done a guide on. So please, if you do find these videos helpful, it is a massive help to the channel and myself if you hit that like button. And also, let me know in the comment section how it is helping, helping you out, whether it's gained your time, whether it's helped your race pace. These are all things I love to read. So yeah, please let me know in the comment section. Uh, anyway, let's get back on with this video. So it is driving the Renault RSO one round Laguna Seca, a combination, like I say, is quite tricky to get used to. This car is one that I tend to avoid for time trial. But if you give this car the time of day and start getting used to the way you've got to keep the revs going with this car, there is a lot of time to be found at the Gunasika. It really does suit the track with the gearing, with the front end being so strong. Now, I wouldn't advise doing the actual race with this car. Obviously, for race, I think the Beetle is probably one of the better cars. Vantage could be a good choice as well. Lexus, um, Mercedes, Porsche, for example, uh, very good Mazda returns and Subaru as well. Even the Evo, I would give the maybe the Evolution could be worth a shot at this track also. But let's get along with this track guide to try and help improve your lap time at Laguna Seca in the Renault RS01. So this is all about your qualifying time trial. So going into turn one, you're going to be braking just after the number four board on the right hand side. So you're going to see the number four board pop up just there. And we're going to hit the brakes there. You can see you don't want to brake any later than that red line, really, because you will overshoot the corner if you do. So quite early on the brakes, downshifting down into second gear, you're going to see. Now, I like to hold a very, very tight and narrow line to this apex. It will help your lap time. You'll see the ghost in front of me was number one on the top 10 leaderboards as well. We both follow a very similar line through this corner, keeping it nice and tight, getting the left hand tire onto that curb, then onto the throttle and keeping them revs going in this Renault. It's very important to do that. Now into this tricky right hand corner, you'll see that you really want want to extend as far to the left as possible just a little bit of braking input going in just there after the um, number two board and yeah you can see how we're really trying to extend and the angle into this corner and on the throttle as early as possible clipping the curb on the right hand side using again all the white bit of tarmac on the left hand side the white bit of curb and now chucking it into this corner it's so important to really throw the car in and you can see just a tiny bit of braking input in there just to get the weight rotation onto the front of the car to help with the extra speed that you can take also be very careful you do not hit the sausage curb on the right hand side you have to just skim that early up shift into fourth gear keep that throttle planted and come out the corner there with quite good momentum out into the next braking zone where again you're going to brake just past the number three board on the right hand side very important you don't brake too late here you're going to see already braking inputs going in there i like to do this because it gives me more ability to get the car slowed down into the apex and get on the power early it's so important to get on the power early for this corner because you're working your way up the hill in the renault obviously the renault suffering with not the most powerful car on the grid it needs to get on that throttle nice and early to carry that momentum up into this very tricky left hand corner which we're going to come to now so looking to break just before the number two board on the right hand side and you can see that is the apex where that red line is there and again using the full width for the track so important to do into this very tricky left hand corner that you're doing fourth game again you can see the ghost car in front of me almost skimming that sausage curb that is the almost perfect line through there and then using the full width for the track on the exit to make sure that you carry the momentum all the way now into the corkscrew which again a very tricky corner at Laguna Seca again brake mark you can see the braking spot there is where the tarmac just becomes a little bit darker there where the brakes have been inputted onto the um, tarmac and you can see I'm on the brakes nice and early here although it might actually be a fraction late you can see how we straighten the car up going into the corkscrew and I have to turn in very early to get the car rotated so would have rather come from a slightly wider angle but you can see as long as you get your left hand tires just skimming that green bit of um, astro there on the left hand side and again on the corkscrew managed to rotate the car quite nicely and again you really want to take a lot of this corner off but not too much that you pick up a penalty and on the throttle nice and early to get that balance on the car back if you if you're very if you're not too early on the throttle you will find that the car will become very loose through there and again two very different lines i take from number one goes i take a very narrow line through here he takes a much wider line 
both pretty equal. I have to go come out the throttle slightly on the exit there. You can see just to make sure I don't run too far wide, but very equal in terms of lap time, I think. Now, braking just before the number two board on the left-hand side. We're going to downshift to third gear, but early upshift back into fourth gear as we go through the corner. You're going to see on the throttle and then up to fourth gear as we come out the corner to keep that momentum as the rear goes a little bit loose there, but we managed to save it. And now braking just before the number three board on the right-hand side. That is, again, very important to get the braking done nice and early here. I actually brake again a little bit too too late and go into this corner a little bit too early on the apex you see how the top time takes a wider line that is going to give him better exit speed but i do catch up with the line that i take through there however you're going to see i lose a bit of time can't get on the throttle quite so early a little bit of a snappy rear where we took a tighter line can't really get that power down and he gains a little bit on the exit so you can see again two very different lines but again pretty similar in terms of pace through there in terms of the lines that we took so not a massive difference so hopefully this guide will help you out in terms of getting your time down in the Renault RS01. We're going to look at that again from the chase camera just to show you again from the above view to show you about using the maximum width of the track. It really is important. So going through here again, you can see how tight we take this corner, almost keeping it as tight as possible through the apex there. That will gain you a lot of time doing that. And again, now look at this onto the curb, using the curb on the left to throw the car in, using the curb on the right. And then again, all the track is being used. And again, through this right hand corner, you can see how we're using every inch of the track. We're trying to extend as much as possible that will widen the angle into these corners which will give you better lap time more exit speed more mid apex speed these are all things that are very important again using the full bit of track there working our way up into this point you can see again in this tricky left hand corner how close you have to get to that sausage curb and again we did that pretty much spot on using some of the track on the outside and then working our way into the corkscrew and this is where we break the fraction late had to turn in quite early into the corkscrew you can see how i had to rotate it very quickly and risk it was very close to getting the penalty there, but we almost nailed it perfectly on the um, apex of the court screw. And then through here, you can see it's all about just making sure you don't run too far wide. Again, skimming that curb onto the throttle nice and early, almost onto the gravel, but just about stopping it. And then into that braking zone, we turned in a little bit too early here, but I think we made it work. I made it work just about enough there to get on the power and work our way over the line for a 1 minute 20.9, which it is currently in the top 10 stars. It probably won't be in a few days, but... I think that we've, I probably can go another tenth or two on top of that. And I'm pretty sure the times will tumble down towards the end of the week. But anyway, I hope this has helped you out. Please let me know in the comment section if you do enjoy these videos. If it does help you out, hit that like button. Like I say, it's a massive help to the channel if you take the time to hit the like button, comment on the video and let me know how it has helped you out. And hopefully we can get some more of these done in the future. Thanks again for watching everyone. I'll be back soon. See you all soon for another video. Bye now.